Welcome to episode one of this podcast, which is called Drama Candy. I am India from the blog Drama Debussy, which means I'm the drama in this duo. <laughs> Are you, you the drama? <laughs> I am the drama. I'm, I'm the drama. <laughs> <laughs> and the candy of this duo is uh, Cheryl from CandyCandy.com. That's with a K. That's with a K. Remember that. It's with a K. Drama with a D and candy with a K. Like two, two Ds and two Ks. I'm, I am so want to make an inappropriate joke right now, but I'm not, not going to do not it. Not yet. All not right. Yet. <laughs> We're not there. We have to make sure everyone gets to know us first. Yeah. All right. So Drama Candy is a new podcast that we've created, and it's simply going to be bringing you the latest in K-pop news and K-drama news. And in case you're new to this whole thing, K-pop is short for Korean pop music. And K-drama is short for Korean drama. I'm sure you probably already knew that, but we have to assume that you guys, you know, we have to be fair to everyone and explain those kind of things. So if you knew, good for you. If not, now you know, you're in the know. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we, to tell you a little bit about ourselves, uh, like I said, my name is India. I run the blog Drama Debussy. I'm also a part-time blogger and vlogger sometimes whenever I feel like it and I've been watching Korean dramas for about 13 years now and it is the best and worst thing that's ever happened to me but if you ever find me on the internet that's mainly what I'm talking about is Korean dramas uh, for the most part I talk about every type of Asian drama but mainly Korean dramas and I'm Cheryl with candycandy.com which is basically a website that I made with a friend of mine Terry and it's just about things that we like which include Korean Korean pop, Korean dramas, anime, animation, um, and we also kind of delve in like social issues pertaining to women, women in arts, women in K-dramas, which we'll probably delve into <laughs> a little bit further. For sure. So um, basically, I've been into Korean dramas and Korean culture, I guess, for about seven years. I actually met India through Korean drama stuff. So that's it's true. That's why we're still together today. <laughs> yeah, we're going strong, you guys, <laughs> going strong, all because of Korean culture. It's awesome. Now, I feel like we, well, we both feel that we should make it very clear just so that we can go ahead and solve any mysteries right now. Neither one of us are Korean. We are very much American, but we're not Korean. We don't speak Korean fluently. Uh, so and we never have claimed to speak fluently unless we get particularly drunk and that's about it. But otherwise, we don't, we don't we talk about that fans. yet. Okay. No, we don't. No, we don't. I'm giving away all the secrets. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But no, I mean, we are just simply fans and we really encourage this, albeit small community of international fans who are into the Korean culture. We just encourage uh, conversations and we hope that what we talk about here on this podcast will encourage you guys to be vocal and you know we're going to give you all of our information on how to reach out to us and where to find us and we just want you guys to just be honest and vocal and tell us exactly how you feel because that's exactly what we're going to do for you guys so hopefully this will be a long-term relationship we established today so let's get this started Cheryl how you doing I'm doing okay <laughs> By the way, everyone, her voice was like eight octaves higher than that, like right before we started recording. Do not believe that that little meek voice she just put on. Don't believe it at all. When the birds start singing, that's when I'll change the tone of my voice. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or you when guys the dogs just start you... barking because there's dogs here. Too. Cheryl's got a small zoo over there and <laughs> back there. So if you happen to hear it, that's what it is. But I personally think it's a great effect. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to add anything. It's just there. It's very, it's very calming. I like it. I know they're being strangely, <laughs> they're being strangely quiet right now, which I don't know. I don't know. Calm before the storm, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So whenever we do this podcast, we're going to be talking about a few topics, as I said, from Korean dramas and uh, Korean pop music so i guess food, we should korean start food. with no <laughs> food korean food we may even be eating korean food while we're doing this from time to time which i'm sure you'll love to hear through some headphones that'll be fantastic so i thought today we kind of start off with my favorite topic in the entire world which are korean dramas and i guess my first thing i wanted to talk about today is um have you heard that tv and cinderella and the four nights they sort of 
kind of technically not technically have a time slot have you heard about this i haven't i mean i heard inkling, okay. inklings of that stuff but i haven't really paid attention because it's kind of one of those weird no, no, things no, no, no. you kind of start here's the thing with tv and stuff it's kind of like I get into it when it's on because I never know exactly what TVN is super up to. Well, this one is a little bit odd, which is why I bring it up. Now, I'm a TVN fan. I love their Same. dramas. Um, this particular one, Cinderella and the Four Knights, it sounds really corny and it's because it is. It's basically a youth romance drama and it's basically about this young woman who moves into this rich family's home and she's basically their maid. And it's three hot guys that she has to cater or two for the most part and I think there's like one more guy who technically doesn't live in the house uh, and then there's like a another female that's all kind of in it it really is just fluff you could just tell it's all fluff and I have to admit I wasn't going to pay attention to it because it's got like it's got Jung Il Woo in it An Jae Hun and CM Blue's Yi Jung Shin and A Pink Song uh, let me try that again and A Pink Song Na Eun and it's it's just a really young cast it just kind of sounds like something you can kind of just throw away but I tell you why I started paying attention was because this, when they announced it, they were saying it was going to be completely pre-produced. And it's actually starring, our heroine is going to be played by Park Sodom, who, if you haven't noticed or not, is also starring in Beautiful Mind on KBS. Well, there was already issues from the very beginning because, you know, it's not good for business to have two drama starring the same leading lady you can do it but it's kind of confusing for the audience so cinderella and the four knights they were actually supposed to start filming earlier this year and something happened in their production and it got pushed back it just kept getting pushed back and then it started messing with the schedule for beautiful mind which is a problem so what happened is there started being these rumors going around saying that kbs kbs is pissed off and it's kind of fun to see how TVM responded, which was basically, oh, crap, we screwed up. We're going to fix it. And it's them basically throwing their hands up like we come in peace. And it's just great because it just reminds me, even though TVN is definitely coming up in the drama world, it just reminds us that it's still the redheaded stepchild. It's still the Fox it will Network. Never... <laughs> it's, absolutely. It's still Fox it's still with like married much... children. And... <laughs> absolutely. It's still very much, it doesn't want to have anything to do. It does not want to piss off the big three, which are KBS, SBS, and KBS, which I wouldn't want to either. And as far as I'm concerned, I kind of feel like KBS was being a little bit of a bully with this whole thing because they basically told them you were supposed to start airing this around the same time that we plan on airing beautiful mind and that doesn't work for us even though we were actually going to go into production after you had originally planned with the date you were going to air this but that's not going to work for us anymore and it's on you because you screwed up so they were a little bit of a bully they kind of had a point but then at the same time i'm just kind of like tvn's not going to win this and they knew it so now there's the rumor most recently there's a rumor saying that they plan on putting it in a really weird time slot, which is Friday, Saturday at 11 p.m., which sounds like it's, yeah, it sounds like it's being set up for disaster with that. But keep in mind, they've had good, all of haven't the, they had like kind of good yeah, luck with that time slot? They've had good, very good luck with that. And let's call it what it is. Like I said, this sound, this sounds like a fluff show. Like they, it's they're like in their, it's it. like it in their, it goes in line with their Flower Boy series. Exactly. It doesn't really seem like something they really expected to do amazing. And it's def it's not for their typical audience, which let's call it what is Ajima's actually watch dramas more than any other audience in Korea. Yeah. So it's not really built for them. So it was kind of surprising they gave them this time slot because it sounds like a weird time slot. But actually, all of the Answer Me series was in that time slot. Mi Sang was in that time slot. It's a good time yeah. slot. So I guess this is their kind of way of still giving the show an advantage in spite of everything. But I just, I found it so interesting to see how TVN was just kind of like, okay. it doesn't matter how well we're doing. <laughs> we're, we're not yeah. fighting with the big three. We're not doing it. You know, it's kind of think interesting cute. with that casting going back on like Jung Il Woo being in it. It's like you yeah. mentioned, you're just like, well, you know, it's in a time slot that, you know, Ajamas and stuff like that. But if you think about all those time all those shows that were in that time slot, like that's how M. Shi Wan is a huge, um, has a huge Ajima fan base. A um, couple of those actors in the Reply series has a huge. So this is just making older women stay up later 
when they're at home <laughs> with their makgeolli. Pretty much. <laughs> because yeah. Jung Il Woo they were, totally yeah. has that Ajima fan base. Because why would he be Absolutely. why would he be in this kind of series? I mean, he's over he's basically over it. Like that's like asking, you know, him to be in like another freaking flower boy show or whatnot, you know, and he, now he is because this could, because yeah. he hasn't, I haven't paid attention to his past stuff lately. Yeah. You don't have to. 